Keith Wood is executive director of the National Secular Society in London, which protects the rights of atheists and agnostics. I have to say that I've been entirely wrong about this Pope. I thought that the last one was as bad as they could get. But the current Pope has demonstrated that he can be much worse than his predecessor. How? Well, let's start with the Vatican's shameful behavior in 2008 at the UN. Several nations, uh, led by France and, and the other members of the European Union, introduced a resolution that would decriminalize people for being gay in countries around the world. And um, the Vatican opposed that. Jeff Stone, I'm from the Gay Catholic Group, Dignity USA. They claim that it would lead to same-sex marriage, but it, it has nothing to do with same-sex marriage. It was really just a question of making it legal to be gay so that people couldn't be persecuted as they have been in many countries and, and simply thrown in jail. A gay Catholic seems like a Jewish Nazi to us, but what he's saying matters. There are still 81 countries where it's illegal to be gay and seven where you can actually be put to death for it. The Vatican seems to be okay with that. Maybe that's just a wee bit hypocritical. One of the most basic teachings of the Catholic Church is that all people are children of God and that they're entitled to dignity and respect. So it seems that the church is not really living up to that ideal. And the almost ultimate irony is that I do not know of an organization anywhere that has such a high proportion of gay people in its employ. Well, the bullshit staff, but he doesn't know that. According to some studies, anywhere between 20 to 50% of all priests may be gay. So the misery that must be being caused by this nasty man in Rome is almost without parallel. Well, it's all very well to say the world didn't know better. The world had no knowledge of how dangerous, crime, uh, how dangerous a crime child abuse was. I want to read you some of the words of Ratzinger, the current pope. Staggers me to admit that he is the head of state of a country. Incidentally, Anne Whittingham said, we didn't have the power of a nation state. Yes, you do. You are a nation state. Yes, I wrote it down. You mentioned that. You are a nation state. And it is no accident that the Cairo, the UN Cairo Population Conference, when they were trying to do something about the world's population spinning out of control, Vatican City, as a nation state represented at that conference, made a joint statement with the Islamic countries of the world, notably the most extreme Islamic countries of the world, led by Saudi Arabia, and it, it began on behalf of the revealed religions of the world, dot, 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 and what it did was essentially hobble and veto any possibility of women's sexual freedom in the world, because as we know, the Islamic religion and the Catholic Church have never been anything other than implacably opposed to women's choice in their own bodies and their destinies. However, so Ratzinger in 2003, was, he, was, he was prefect, I, I'm not making this up, he was prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith. And it was his job to deal with the child abuse scandal that was brewing. His first act was to write a letter to Catholic bishops ordering them on pain of excommunication not to talk to the police or anyone else. Investigations should be handled, he wrote, and I'm quoting that letter, in the most secretive way, restrained by perpetual silence. The Mexican founder of the Legion of Christ movement, Maciel de Goyado, was protected from his own catalogue of child abuse, which is horrific. One cannot put on trial so close a friend of the Pope, said Ratzinger. When the allegations could no longer be denied, Maciel was sentenced, <laughs> sentenced to a life of prayer and penitence. <laughs> and Ratzinger described the whole affair and that of Bernard Law of Boston, to which my colleague also referred, uh, as causing suffering for the church and for me personally. He also said the answer would be to stop homosexuals from being allowed into the church. There was a period when Uganda had the worst incidence of HIV AIDS in the world. I went to Rakai, the village where it was first spotted. But through an amazing initiative called ABC 
abstinence, be faithful, correct use of condoms. Those three, I am not denying that abstinence is a very good way of not getting AIDS. It really is. It works. It, so does being faithful. But so do condoms. And do not deny it. And this Pope, this Pope, not satisfied, not satisfied with saying condoms are against our religion, please consider first abstinence, second being faithful to your partner. He spreads the lie that condoms actually increase the incidence of AIDS. He actually makes sure that aid is conditional on saying no to condoms. I have been to, there's a hospital in Bwindi in the west of Uganda where I do quite a lot of work. It is unbelievable the pain and suffering you see.